Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I want to take you back to a day in August 1862 during the Second Battle of Bull Run or Second Battle of Manassas, a particular moment in the battle involving the U.S. regulars, a brigade of the U.S. regulars in the thick of a serious firefight, part of a rear guard action against the Confederates near the Henry House Hill. The enemy poured a heavy fire into the brigade. Situation appeared grim. The men in blue began to lose their nerve. A smell of loss mingled, lingered with the drifts of gun smoke pouring across this section of the battlefield. Union staff officers, concerned, worried, found the commanding officer, the man pictured here, Lieutenant Colonel William Chapman, and they implored him to pull back. It was too late. They needed to save their lives. Chapman looked at them, considered the situation, and finally gave them an answer that resonated with them. He said, quote, we have been put here for something. I don't know just what, but I have never retreated without orders, and I cannot do it now. The men stayed, and they fought it out. Now, I read that sentence, I read that quote, and I thought, what makes a soldier so calm, cool, and collected in a situation such as this where Everything around you seems to be falling apart. The young staff officers galloping around, looking for some way out. If you look into Chapman's career, you'll find out his words reflect experience and courage. The son of Maryland and an 1831 West Point graduate. His service, those formative years and his professional career as a soldier, followed young America's westward expansion. His first duty was at Fort Mackinac in Michigan. That was in 1831, 1832, fresh out of West Point. During that second year, 1832, he was in the Black Hawk Expedition. After that, he returned to New York for a stint as an instructor of tactics at West Point. A few years later, 1840, 1841, he was on duty in Fort Snelling in Minnesota. There's an interesting quote from, the, from him. He said, or a quote from a biographer about him saying, quote, he was wont to recall the pleasant situation of that fort and remember that when he went there, there was but one log shanty on the present site of St. Paul which was then called Pig's Eye Village, gives you a sense of how early he was in the westward expansion of the country, the early development of the Midwest into the industrial powerhouse and the breadbasket of the United States. A few years later in the Mexican War, he was wounded and received some brevets. The wound came during operations that ended in the capture of San Antonio. It was March 1847. Some months later in September, he was in the Battle of Molino del Rey. During that action, eight superior officers ahead of him became casualties and command of his regiment devolved upon him. Here's a young guy leading a regiment into battle after all of his superiors had been shot down. He spent the 1850s in Florida, in Texas, in Utah. There was Seminole Indian problems, troubles happening in Florida that took up some of his attention. And then in the West, as expansion was happening out that way. In fact, he was there in New Mexico territory in 1861 when the war began and he was called back East at that point. He was appointed Lieutenant Colonel of the 3rd U.S. Infantry and joined Major General George Sykes' regulars 
and fought in the Peninsula Campaign that was in 1862, early to mid-62. And then after that came the Battle of Second Bull Run and that situation when he found himself in the rear guard action with the young officers looking for a way out. Chapman would later compare the intensity of the fire at Second Bull Run to Molino del Rey in 1847. However, he managed to convince the men to calm down. He was not wounded. The situation at Molino del Rey wound up with him being in command. He was already in command at Second Bull Run and he stayed. He was not wounded. His staff officers listened to what he had to say. They continued to fight the rear guard action and prove themselves worthy. It was a slow withdrawal and everything went as well as could be expected. Matter of fact, he received a colonel's brevet in recognition of his gallantry in that rear guard action. It, however, did turn out to be his last combat he was not well, he was feeling sick, um, and it only got worse, went on sick leave in the autumn of 1862, and ultimately retired from active service on disability the following year. Now, flash forward a quarter century to 1886. In that year, a team of 13 French artists led by Theophile Poilpot unveiled a 20,000 foot canvas painting in the round titled The Battle of Manassas or The Second Battle of Bull Run. It's a massive artwork. It was as realistic as it possibly could be. It was made from battlefield sketches by those French artists, along with research and interviews with those who participated. That painting, that 20,000 foot round painting, when it was completed, it was housed in an impressive circular building, which was located in Washington, DC, not far from the Washington Monument. It was a huge success. It was praised by everyone, nearly everyone who saw it. The Manassas Cyclorama was a must see destination for DC visitors and residents and others in the summer of 1866 and for years afterward. Here's a look at the a diagram of the panorama. You can see the Union half is the top half of the circle, the Confederate half is on the bottom, and there are little uh, words you can see written in the circular area towards the center of the circle. Those uh, words are actually labels and they correspond to numbers that are in the painting. So here's a close up of the top part, and you'll see the circle on the bottom is the charge of Colonel Chapman. He's in the painting. That moment, that rear guard action was captured by those French artists in the painting. If you look up to the other circle, the top circle, you will see there's Colonel Chapman. He's riding on his bay horse. The horse has got the legs up in the air, the front legs up in the air, and Chapman himself is holding his sword overhead. It's an impressive moment. Now, even more here is a, part, a portion of the painting. If you remember the diagram with the group with the American flag and then Chapman over to the left, you can see him. He's towards the left center on horseback, the horse rearing its head, Chapman back in the saddle with the sword overhead. What an impressive image, just absolutely stunning image. And so, as I mentioned, this painting was unveiled in 1886 in Washington, and Chapman probably knew about it, but I think it's unlikely that he ever saw it because he died in December of 1887 at his home in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I don't think that he ever saw it, 
but I really do like to think that he knew about it. Now, you may wonder what happened to the cyclorama. Well, the interest in that painting and as a money-making destination certainly occurred for quite a while. It actually kept going until the very early 20th century when interest finally declined. It became a less popular attraction. It was sold and purchased by another enterprising individual who went on to display it at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904 and at the Jamestown Tricentennial Exposition in 1907. At that point, around 1907 or sometime after the display in Jamestown, the painting disappeared. The conventional wisdom is it was cut into pieces and sold to make money, a final bit of earnings from this painting. The painting that I showed you, the copy that I showed you, is from another surviving print. So the original is lost, although it's very possible that if it was cut into pieces, that those pieces are out there somewhere waiting to be found. And so the piece that I want is that section that shows the good Lieutenant Colonel Chapman on his horse leading that rear guard operation, uttering those words that calmed down the staff officers and managed to at least save part of the day in that section of the battle around the Henry House Hill. So thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode.